Hello everyone, I'm Pacific the Casual Gamer and welcome back to another video. And in this one, I would actually like to talk about um, the expansion pack that's out for Civilization VI. It's like a mainline one called Rise and Fall. And honestly, just from playing it, it's honestly a DLC that I think everyone who owns Civ VI should get. It's really, really good. It's not exactly a big expansion pack, it really doesn't add a lot to the game. Like, for an expansion pack, it's definitely overpriced. But, the gameplay implementations that it adds, and the, the kind of extra bits that it adds, do add to the game experience. And I, I think, like, like if you own Civ Six or you don't own it, and it goes on sale, or Rise and Fall goes on sale, you should get it. And so in Rise and Fall, there's kind of a new system in place, a couple new systems with governors and era scores. And what it comes down to is the governors, you put them in cities and they do different things. And they have special abilities. And you promote them through various ways, like building some buildings or um, re researching certain civics you can promote or get new governors. There's six governors. And it adds a layer to the game that it just it just adds to it, the governor system. Like I remember I was playing on a on a world where I didn't have very good food spawn. And there was a governor where if a trade route ended in your city, it added two to the trade route. So I put him in a city. And it was really nice because that city was in the front, like kind of towards where all the other civs were. So if a war happened, that was the city where it would be staged from. And I put them in that city and all my trade routes would just go to that city if I needed extra food. And it worked really well. <clears throat> and then there was another lady that when you do it, you can unlock this upgrade called the fishery. And it's just a, a tile improvement that you put down when you want to upgrade just straight up coast tiles that are just coast tiles, they don't really do anything. And it adds food production to them, and I needed food, so I'm like, oh, perfect, I'll upgrade her. And then there was another guy with some culture buffs, because I wanted a lot of culture, because I don't know why, I just decided I wanted to try out a culture game. So, I got the culture guy. And it was really nice just using the governors, it's really nice using them and trying to figure out the metas and, you know, where all the promotions are and how to rush promotions or not. Now with, with that, there's also what's called the era score. So, um, I know that when you play Civ, you can look at the time in the top right and be like, oh, it's only 1200 AD and we already have planes or something like that, right? It's a common thing that if you're even semi-decent civilization, you usually unlock technologies before they actually were developed in the real world. And <clears throat> there's this thing that they have called the era score so you have a dark age a normal age and a golden age <clears throat> and if you don't do enough during those actual ages like the actual ancient era which i think is like 4000 bc to 0 ad or something like that i don't know the specifics or you know you don't do enough things during the classical era you get a dark age and during the dark ages they have a loyalty system um, which also kind of plays off the governors and the loyalty system is like if your citizens aren't loyal to you and there's ways to m use it and manipulate it if they're not loyal to you then the city will riot and most likely end up joining another civilization which actually makes it so you can't colonize um, as far out and kind of like do the thing where someone's capital your capitals are over here on opposite sides of the map and you take a settler and put them over here and so it ends up not working but the loyalty system um, is affected by the Dark Ages and also the Golden Ages. And after the Ancient Era, you pick, the game gives you four dedications. And what's really nice about them is there's like all the normal things that add to your era score plus whatever the dedication is. So like my thing is I was playing a game and I was about to build up a bunch of districts. And I got really lucky, and there's a, a dedication where it adds one to the era score for every new specialty district you build. And I'm like, okay. But then, I picked that, and it can't change it. So, 
I have to follow through with my plans. Like, I have to make plans and follow through with them, and if you follow through with them, you get rewarded. And that's what I think adds to Civilization VI, is the goal setting and the objective, almost objective-based gameplay that they tried to pull off in uh, Beyond Earth, but failed dismally at, is kind of nice because... You know, you can always have a plan of like, I'm gonna build an industrial district in every city and be super productive and make a bunch of military units. Or, I'm gonna put a theater square in every city and have the most great writers, you know, anything like that. But now, it's almost like you get extra rewards for go following through with your plans, but then there's also a risk factor any give, at any, any given time where you could fall into a dark age and just get screwed over. And the Dark Ages, first of all, I don't like it because it just, it makes your screen darker. It's, it's weird. It's like, ugh, I don't like it. But then the last thing that Rise and Fall adds is it adds a bunch of modern era units. Like, you guys ever wonder in the modern era, it's always kind of boring gameplay. It's always like ancient era, you rush around with I don't know, archers and you get crossbowmen and you have like swordsmen and eventually knights and musketmen. And then usually me personally... I save a siege tower, because then I use the siege tower with the mechanized infantry and infantry. And then Rise and Fall, they added support units that were actually really useful. Like they added, first they added a spec ops unit, which is a really cool unit that can para drop. They added a drone, which adds range to your artillery, but it's a support unit, so it has to be there. They added the medic, but the, or the medic isn't added. But they added like a supply convoy upgrade to it. They added a Renaissance era anti cavalry unit. And it just kind of like added more to the modern era than just simply its spam of rocket artillery or battleships or something of the sort. So they kind of added just more different types of units into the game. And all of that together, I think, really leads to a fun experience and they added more wonders too and they're more cool wonders like there's a wonder they added where if you build it you get one plus charge on all of your great admirals and i believe it was great engineers or if you don't spawn with any iron there's a great wonder that provides you with two iron or some like random things like that and it just it just overall kind of makes a more cohesive civ experience it makes it so you can specialize yourself more and there's more things that you have to worry about. So you can't just, it, it's, it makes it, someone, I heard this once, they put it in such a good way. It makes it so the strategy of Civilization VI, 100% of the time is not build as many cities and conquer as many people as possible. Now, it's kind of more balanced. I still think it's more on the conquering side still, but it's more balanced and it makes it too, so, you can experiment with different play styles knowing that you might discover something that is really going to help you out in your game. So that's all about Rise and Fall. I guess I just, this is honestly just a what does Rise and Fall add, but I really think you should guys, if you have Civ 6, you should get Rise and Fall. It's, it just adds to the game immensely and it makes it more of a challenge, it makes it more fun and more rewarding because it, you can pull off some awesome plays and saves and stuff like that in a overall kind of Civ can be kind of boring in the middle right and so it kind of you can do stuff to influence yourself and it keeps you more engaged with the game other than the same strategies that you always use in every Civ game so let me know what you guys think about Rise and Fall in the comments below I think you guys should get it I really like it um that's it for this video. If you enjoyed, you can tell me in the comments below. Subscribe if you're new for more videos. I'm Pacific, the casual gamer. I suck just as bad as you do at video games, and I'll see you in the next episode of Stream Vlog or Steam a post of whatever I decide to make.